This has been a video I've been wanting to make for a couple weeks now. Uh, it's been a good amount of time from when I did the first couple videos about the Blue Compass and the PSA 1, their individual videos, and their head-to-head -head that I had. In that first head-to-head, -head, I spoke about the versatility of these boom arms. And the reason why I brought it down to that factor to see which one I prefer and maybe which one you guys prefer is because they both cost the same amount of money. There's no monetary reason to choose one or the other. It's a matter of style and it's a matter of functionality. And I feel that the PSA 1 might lack a little bit in looks, but definitely makes up in the versatility and the functionality as a mic stand and as a mini jib, as I pointed out. But I definitely did give the Blue Compass the cold shoulder, mostly because I hadn't had it much as much time with it. And it's becoming more of a useful piece of gear than I intended it to be. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel, I'm Justin, and in this video we're going to be having a part two of Rode PSA1 versus the Blue Compass and showing you what I missed and showing you things that I have learned about the Blue Compass and pushing it closer to that uh, PSA1 level of functionality and versatility. But before we get started, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, please leave them down in the comments. I love having conversations with you guys about gear and about these two boom arms. Uh, if you want to talk about uh, what microphones can go on them, uh, the functionality as a, a jib, uh, like a camera jib, mini jib, really. Or just about anything, you could ask me down there. Also, you could ask me more directly while I stream every Saturday afternoon into the night. Uh, around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock that time on this channel and on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ghetto happy. I start off about an hour here and uh, do some uh, things like uh, lately I've been doing dot art and that's where we're going to talk about the flu compass and how it shines as a top down view. Uh, but we'll get into that a little later. So yeah, you can ask me questions there as well. And if you found this video helpful, entertaining, or anything whatsoever, please leave a like and consider subscribing. All right, so I still stand by what I said in the first video. I prefer the PSA-1 over the Blue Compass. For my use and my uh, workflow and everything that has to go into it, I feel like the Blue Compass kind of lacks in some avenues for for me but i'm going to show you that it can be more applicable to some of you content creators that are in art or diy projects or something that has to do with a top-down view and there is where i missed it that where i completely missed the blue compass as a mini jib as i said in the intro the Blue Compass and the PSA-1 are great options for microphones of any type. Uh, of course, there are some that it works better with on one or the other, but th they're made for microphones. I've made a point in this channel to push the limits of gear and push the limits of things that you have so you can get the most value out of them. Just because something was made for a certain application doesn't mean that you can't use it for other things. For example, I have a mic stand right there, it's holding my light. Most people don't think, oh, I could use a, a mic stand as a light stand. Works the same way, all it is is a stand. So if you have a bunch of mic stands and you're like, oh, I need something to put the lights on. Well, take one of your mic stands, get an adapter for the uh, threads, or you get the ones that just pop on and you have a little tightening screw. Either way, it works the same way. You might even save a little bit of money because sometimes those C stands or those, uh, light stands they can be very expensive or you get the cheaper ones and they're a little bit flimsy i prefer mic stands but my audio background i've used them a lot so the first topic i'm really going to dive into is what was i wrong about 
I, I mean, it's my opinion of which one I prefer, but I was wrong about how in depth uh, I should have gone with the Blue Compass. I should have done a little bit more research and did a little bit more uh, testing and trials of the Blue Compass. But I haven't at the time. I didn't had I didn't have it that long, and I was just going off of my initial like thought between the two. A couple months later, a couple of uh, experiments and trials with the two. And the Blue Compass has shown that it can be used as a jib. But the problem is something a little different. And that is where I'm going to show where I was wrong and where I was still kind of right in the sense of using it with a camera. So let's start off with what I was wrong about and what it can be used for as a mini jib. If you've seen my stream on this channel, I have been doing dot art in my stream for the first hour. And then I obviously, like I say in the intro, in every intro, I go over to Twitch and play video games. So what I do is I get a top down view of the, the book that I'm drawing in, or really just dot to dot art. And I just basically focus it and get the lighting right and that's it. It works great for that because the way that the arm is set up, it's, it's angled in a way that it could uh, float over a desk and not be too far out, not too, too far in, and get yourself a good shot of whatever you're doing on a desk. It doesn't necessarily have to be art. If you're doing a DIY of whatever sense, you, you could be building something, you could be uh, maybe even writing if you want to get like... B-roll shots of a uh, top-down of someone drawing or writing, drawing, anything with their hands. Uh, just anything that you can do on a desktop, you could get those shots. Now, this is with a DSLR, the 77D to be more specific. And DSLRs are definitely heavier than your Sony's and even your Canon mirrorless cameras. So if you do have a mirrorless camera, it probably will work a lot better in the sense of being able to hold that weight a little bit better and maybe give you a little bit more flexibility of where you could put it. That is the setback that you're gonna deal with. But compared to the PSA-1, the PSA-1, the way that it's angled, you can't get it back enough on a regular size desk. Uh, for example, my desk is about uh, 24 inches wide, maybe a little less probably less than two feet and it can't get back enough to get the right angle sure with my z stand the z plate that i have on there i could probably angle it a little bit better but as far as like just putting it on there and getting a top down view it's it just doesn't work that great it doesn't make it easy for you the blue compass on the other hand does but the setback is it can't hold as much weight which can be fixed by setting up a line or if you have a smaller camera like a like if you have one of those sony's like a series like the a6100 a uh 5100 or so, one of those small ones I, they don't weigh anything they're, they're pretty much the same weight as a regular size microphone so you could probably make it work with that a little bit better for me and anybody who uses a dslr you're gonna have to deal with those problems and consider the lens that you put on there as well because your lens has to be a wide angle lens because it's so close to the desk now the next thing i want to get into is what was i right about and what do i really feel that i continue to push with my opinion well i still stand by the psa1 as being a my favorite and my go-to as far as using in my content creation and still the the use of microphones on it with the blue compass you really only have one option i actually saw a couple of comments uh recently of people saying i kind of like the blue compass having the microphone in the upward position uh it fits my style and it fits what i'm doing perfect that's awesome that's that's really good there are some people that it will work in that scenario but in my opinion i feel like it's more flexible with the psa1 to angle your microphone to your liking 
All right, so some final thoughts on these two boom arms. My opinion has fluctuated since the last couple of videos about these arms. Uh, I still stand by the PSA 1 being the main one I would choose if I had to choose just one. And I still stand by if you have the cash and 200 bucks to toss on it, I would definitely get both because both of them work great in conjunction with each other. Now, if you were to say last time I was probably like 70-30 in favor of the PSA 1, right now I'd say it's probably close to like 55-45 uh, because the Blue Compass has shown that it could do things that the PSA 1 can't, meaning top-down stuff on your desk. A slight edge to the PSA 1. I might be a bit biased because I have had it longer, but it's definitely a closer matchup than I first made it out to be in the first video. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked that video, please hit the like button down below and consider subscribing for more videos like this, more comparisons, more mic reviews, more gear reviews, maybe even more DIY stuff. If you guys have suggestions for that down in the comments, leave them. And speaking of comments, if you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, leave it down in the comment section down below. If you want to ask me more directly, I stream every Saturday afternoon into the night, uh, right around 5, 6 o'clock, an hour on this channel. Then I switch over to Twitch to play some video games. And as always, be safe, be kind. If it go out, please wear a mask. And I will see you in the next video. The pirate hunters! Ah, we were looking for you. Okay. Sure, why not? Fire! Yeah! We're not gonna border. We are just going to go full speed, ramming them, and taking their stuff.